You are watching Linux Mint 13 XFCE Bootcamp. In today's episode, I am going to cover desktop customization and I'm going to go over XFCE's compositor in greater detail. And all of that learning begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Now it's time to customize our desktop. I thought I'd switch it up a little bit for you guys today. I figured from now on, I'll just run my virtual machine in full screen, and you'll know it's a virtual machine because you will see this lovely menu at the top of the screen here. And uh, I think this will make things a little bit better so that you can focus on the content that I have displayed on the screen rather than looking at my goofy mug you don't want to see me making all kinds of faces do you <laughs> okay so to customize our desktop let's uh, try and do a few things uh, first you're going to notice here that on our um, file browser here and we're using Thunar um, really no window borders to write home about well we can actually change that we're gonna cover that in this episode I'm also going to uh, cover compositing uh, with the built-in compositor in greater detail first let's get rid of this Linux Mint wallpaper okay you can right-click on the desktop here and you can select desktop settings Okay, from here you can select any image that you want. There are a number of them to choose from already. I suppose this one looks as good as any. All right. But we don't have to have that if we don't want to. We can also choose an image list, and then by using the plus button, you can add a number of images into a list, and it will display them at certain intervals. Okay, and then if you select none, you can change that to a vertical or horizontal gradient which is kind of cool and that's actually how I have mine set up you can also adjust the brightness and saturation which is also kind of cool so now you can uh, take that to a whole new level with your photographs and that sort of thing you know if you need to darken up an image that you're using on a desktop you can do that right here okay in menus you have a number of options available to you here now you'll remember in the last episode we installed the mint menu and I suggested that you put your uh, your settings panel right here or somewhere on your bar so that you can easily access them because the mint menu for some reason doesn't like to display it in the event that you did not put this panel this uh, the, the control panel on your panel <clears throat> for the best way to put it I suppose you can right click on your desktop here select applications go into settings and then your settings manager is here obviously it's hidden by this top part but you get the idea okay but you have access to them in case you did not put that menu here but you can select to hide that if you wanted to so now when you right click on the desktop it's no longer there just an option okay and then you have other little options right here and then of course icons you can define the size of your icons if you want to make them really big really small or none at all just the way I like it I like a desktop that doesn't have any icons or anything on there to distract me from my workspace okay and pretty much uh, that's all I have on just the desktop portion itself but now let's say we want to theme this well to access the themes we'll go into our control center here and then we have a bunch of things that we can tweak we have an appearance applet here which gives you some options for changing uh, the appearance of items namely colors and that sort of thing lots of choices that are available to you I'm just gonna stay with the mint X default one for the time being 
and we're going to close this. Now, let's go back in here. I should have hit the back button instead. You also have a window manager here, which allows you to also change your window borders. You'll see here, there really aren't that many worth writing home about. But that's okay. We can get more, and I'm going to show you where to get them. Click your uh, Mint menu, and just as, do a search for Synaptic. And we'll pull up the Synaptic Package Manager. Of course, we need to put in our password for elevated privileges. And now, let's type themes into Quick Filter. Alright, now, we want to list these alphabetically so I can find the package that I'm after, and that's way down at the bottom, and that is XFWM4 Themes. We'll mark those for installation. Okay, and something interesting I want to point out, I would like to thank one of my subscribers for pointing out in the settings on here, under Preferences, when you're installing packages, if you untick under marking changes if you untick consider recommended packages as dependencies it will only download necessary dependencies for the packages that you are trying to install so I recommend having this option unchecked alright we'll go ahead and press OK and then we'll go ahead and press apply so it can install those themes for us and then we will press apply again okay now that all of our changes have applied we can go ahead and close this you will see that those new themes have not been applied yet however if we go back into all settings here and then back into the window manager now you will see that you have a keel load of themes to choose from and uh, there's a lot of really nice ones to play with just, just you know page through them. I like the cold steel one, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with this one. I think that one looks the coolest out of the bunch. So, why not? I like that one a lot. I wish there was an option to manually uh, change these colors. However, I think in the uh, last applet that we looked at, where we looked at uh, the uh, different themes, let's go back into all settings and go into appearance here. I think we can change that by just simply selecting Yes, see how it changes the colors now by selecting a different theme here. I'm just going to stick with the uh, regular Mint X color here because, um, well, I like green. Okay, so so far we have a nice looking custom desktop now, but why don't we take this a step further here? Um, you have a lot of other options you may want to look into in here. You have uh, other desktop uh, options. We already uh, looked at the desktop background and menu and icon behavior when we right clicked on our desktop. You also have options for the Thunar file manager that you can configure here. You can also configure your screen saver here. Uh, you can configure your workspaces. You'll remember in the very first episode, we I, I cut this down to one workspace and we removed all of the margins. That way, when we maximize windows, they fill the whole screen. So you have those options there. Um, you have your display options here. So if you're running more than one monitor, you can control them from here. You have uh, keyboard and key binding options available to you here. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at this. You can see um, that there are some typing settings. And then you have application shortcuts. So if you have a special program you want to run from a special key binding, you can add this here. Let's look at mouse and touchpad. Right here, you can choose uh, the behavior and then, of course, the theme. I chose a the largest cursor size for this so that you could easily see where my cursor is in these tutorials. You can also choose uh, which mouse theme. Also, if you want more mouse themes, they are available in the Synaptic Package Manager. So just uh, do a search for mouse themes. You will find plenty of them that you can use on your system. Just from the uh, repository. So very, very nice indeed. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at Window Manager Tweaks. This is our compositor. You can choose how windows cycle on your workspaces. Uh, you can decide how... Um, how windows can gain focus there are accessibility options available to you workspace options 
placement options, and then of course the compositor. When I click to enable the display compositor, the screen is going to flash for a moment, and now you will see that I have some transparency going on here. All right, you will notice that when a window gains focus, the other windows turn, you know, um, turn somewhat transparent, which is a neat little feature for many of you. And you can read through all these options. And just by pressing the, moving the sliders here, you can determine, you know, just how transparent or opaque, uh, every window is going to be. Nothing too fancy, no wobbly windows or anything like that, but it's a nice enough feature as it is. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do though is I'm going to shut this off because, uh, I have plans on covering compositing in greater detail. Okay, now you all should know how to customize your desktop and do some compositing. In my next episode, we're going to take compositing a step further. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this. We're going to be doing comp his, so you'll definitely want to stick around for that one. Mm -hmm.